All right, hopefully you got everything up and running. I've got VS Code open on the left here. You can see I've got my app.jsx file open, and then I've got the local terminal set to npm run dev so that it's showing over here in Chrome. Now, in this very first video, we're gonna talk about the basics of React Router DOM, and hopefully this, again, is a refresher. This course is meant to be more of a practice of hopefully what you already learned in Sean's earlier course and any knowledge you already have about React Router DOM. We are going to be using kind of a newer version. 6.8 is the one we're using in this tutorial series, but anything 6.4 and above should have access to kind of the main components we're talking about today. Now, just like any React app, you can see here that I've got this app being injected down here, and this is what we're going to be returning right here. So here's where we're actually going to do all of our routing in the app component. You could also do it in the main.jsx uh, file if you'd like to, but I think it's cleaner just to do it here. Now, like I mentioned, we're going to be using some newer features, and one of those is called Create Browser Router. Now, what this does is enable things like, as you can see here, loaders, actions, and fetchers. We're going to be using all of those in this series. It allows you to basically pass in and then receive data from your actual route itself. And so there's just kind of some nice use case things where React Router DOM kind of takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting for you, and you can just focus on writing JavaScript, all right, or writing your JSX. So we're going to start with Create Browser Router. And you can see that I need to import it. And assuming that you followed the instructions last time, you've got React Router DOM installed, you should be set to go here. So I'm going to grab both of these. And then you see that we can define a router. And I'll go ahead and just copy this out right here. And let's just paste it in up top. And we'll just use theirs as an example to start with. And then we need to pass down Browser Router right inside here. If you want to see these docs, I will have a link in the description to their docs. You just need to find Create Browser Router. It uh, should be pretty easy to find. We're at the top of that page. So here, what we've done is to find a basic route path, and we've passed it to the, the route provider down here. Now, you can see that we've got elements and loaders and all this stuff. Now, we don't have any of this, so we should probably just scrap all this, but at least we've got the bare basics. Now, I should mention that in addition to kind of setting this out as an object. You can also pass in elements instead if you'd prefer that. So if I open this up underneath utilities, you can see create routes from elements. So basically you would just pass this in first and then if you'd rather not define it as an object over here, you'd rather just pass in the elements, you can do it that way too. So either way you just have to use um, create routes from elements if you decide to do it that way. If you're wondering what the difference of those two would look like, here's what it looks like with elements. Here's what it looks like the way we're gonna do it with an object. So either way, just whatever you prefer, uh, but just so you know, you do have another option. Let me come back up top here to create browser router, just in case we need that again, but then let's jump over here and let me go ahead and clear out this loader. And for now, for this element, let's just pass in some JSX, we'll say like hi or something like that. All right, let me go ahead and save this. And here you can see at the base of our site, we're passing in this element or this JSX, which is just hi. All right, so that's why I'm getting it right here. Now, that means if I come in here and I just copy this down, we change this to something like about, and I change this to about, and I save it. Then if I were to come up here and manually come over to about, you can see it says about now at this point. Now, of course, we're going to run into some things, like if I type in something that doesn't exist, now I get this ugly uh, UI here that basically shouldn't be seen by an end user, just by me as the developer. So we'll handle that uh, in a second, too. But that's the basics of just how to set up these routes. You have a path that tells it where to look at. Then you have an element that you pass in that you want it to show. So that's all you really would have to have using Create Browser Router. However, Create Browser Router gives us some extra superpowers. And it lets us pass in a few different things. We have uh, loaders. We also have actions. We can also pass in error elements. And that would basically would tell it what to do if it errors out. So all these things are options for us in this Create Browser Router, this newer version of React Router DOM. All right, so with those basics out of the way, let's go ahead and create our very first route. Now, what I want to do is replace this JSX right here with an actual element. So let's come over here, and I'm going to create a new file. So inside here, we're actually going to do it in a new pages directory. And in VS Code, if you just do pages and a forward slash, it'll create the, the folder for you. And let's call this dashboard.jsx. All right, so we've got a pages directory, and now dashboard.jsx. Now, to kind of template this out quickly, I'm just going to use a snippet, uh, React ES7 snippets, I think, is the extension. And you can see here that I've got a dashboard. It's just returning the word dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and save that there. That means I should be able to come over here and pull this in. So what I want is dashboard, actually like this, dashboard. And if I start to type, you'll see it. It should give you an autocomplete, and it should import it right up top here. So what I can do is maybe just come in here and say, like, uh, let's call it routes, maybe. 
and then I need to close this thing off. And if I save it here, we should see dashboard. So it's actually grabbing this JSX, inserting it here as the element that should show on this path. Now, what we want to do next is actually look at the loader capability. So React Router DOM can say with any particular path, when you hit that path, I want you to load this data. And what we do is define a function that tells React Router DOM how to load that data on each individual route. And the way I prefer to do that is to do it in the same file. And that's kind of how their docs work as well, although you can do this in any file you want. I just like keeping all the logic together for each individual route. So why don't we come in here? We're going to create a loader function. So let's just do loader like that. We need to export this so we can import it in our app.jsx file. So function, and then a lot of people call this loader and then just rename it in the app.jsx file. I prefer to kind of call it what it is so I don't have to rename it there and it just kind of keeps it cleaner for me. So let's call this dashboard loader. And this is just going to be a function that then hits some kind of endpoint, loads it, and then passes it back. All right, so what we're going to do is just create a helper function and a helper file that then should allow us to use this on multiple different routes. So let's come over here and under SRC, we're going to create a new file called helpers.js. This file is going to hold everything we need throughout our application. We'll just slowly be adding to it. You probably want to break this out in some way and write it in separate files, but we're just going to kind of keep it simple. What I'm going to do here is just have a little note to myself that this is where all of my local storage functions are because that's what we're going to be using in this series. And I'm just going to paste this in. Not too hard to follow, so you should be able to type this out or you can grab it from the repo if you'd prefer. You can see I've written it as an arrow function, but it just fetches any data given a key in my local storage and returns it to me. All right, so that's what I'm going to be using to fetch data for this dashboard function uh, as it loads. So I should be able to pull that in by just coming in here and saying const. We're going to first of all load a user name. So I'll say user name, and we'll say this needs to come from fetch data. And you can see again, I've got autocomplete. It should import it, and I need to pass it a key. In this case, I'm going to pass it user name. If that doesn't make sense, I'll explain it here in just a second. But let's first of all clean this up just a touch and just say that these are going to be our helper uh, functions. All right, now I need to actually return out of this the data that I'm getting. So I'll just say return. In this case, I could just return username, but I'm going to eventually add a couple things here. So I'm going to return an object here, and username will be one of the things in that object. Now, again, I'll explain this in a second, but let's first of all get this loader actually up and running. I'm going to come back over to my app.jsx file, and the next thing I want to do is add a loader like that. And then I want to actually pass it the function that's loading things. Now, what function is that? Well, that's my dashboard loader. So if I start to type dashboard loader, you can see it actually comes in. If not, you can manually type it just by adding this in as a named export from the dashboard file. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've added a comma here because this is an object after all. So what it's going to do is it's going to load this immediately when I hit this route. So if I load this, it should actually have already loaded it. And if I pull this open, I won't see anything because I haven't had it display anywhere. So once it loads, how do you actually get the content that's been loaded down into the file itself? Let's come back over this way. There's another help for helper function. And this one we don't have to write. This one comes from React Router DOM. And it's called Use Loader Data. So that's how we're going to use the data inside of here. So if you start to type Use Loader Data, you should actually get this little prompt to import it from React Router DOM. I'm going to move this up top here. We'll just call this like React Router DOM Imports. All right, so use loader data allows us to access whatever is in this loader function. Now again, the loader function can be in any file. What really matters is right here, whatever is being passed in here, this is what you're going to get back in this use loader data function. I should mention this is a hook. That's why it's called use loader data. And all we want to do is destructure our user name from the use loader data. All right, so we've done a lot. Let me just kind of talk you through it briefly here after we add some stuff in the local storage. Since we know we're going to be looking for a username over here, let's go ahead and manually add that since we don't have it in the application, obviously. So we'll go underneath the application and then local storage. And I just want to add a key and a value. So username is what we're looking for and value, I'll just say like Chris. All right, so there we go. We've got that set and ready. Now what, what's happening here is we're getting this username from our function up here every time we hit this route. Now I can actually output this anywhere in the JSX. So let's say like this, we'll say uh, user name. And you can see that I automatically get Chris without doing any more work. So this 
this, uh, this hook right here does all that work for me coming in from my loader data function. And every time I hit this route, this loader will load and pass in any data. So you don't have to worry as much about state and like passing things down back and forth. If you're pulling from the same basic source of data, which you are in a lot of applications, you can basically just tell your loader function, here's what I need on this route and it will get it for you. And that's it. That's all you've got to do. Super, super helpful. All right, so just to make sure that makes sense, let's go ahead and walk through that one more time. If I come over here to my app.jsx file, what I'm saying is that this individual path, here's the element I want to show. That element is right here. All right, now, when I hit that route, I want you to load this data. The data comes from this function, which I happen to have written in the same file, which is kind of standard practice, but you could do this anywhere. And this function right here fetches data using our helper function and then returns it in an object. I'm getting that down into my actual file by using a custom hook that's provided by React Router DOM called Use Loader Data. That's going to pull in here this username, and then I'm displaying that username by adding it directly to my JSX. All right, well, hopefully that made sense. What I want to do next is create a simple error uh, route. So let's come over here, and I think just inside this pages directory, let's create another file. We'll call this error.jsx. Once again, I'm going to template this out using ES7 React snippets, and you can see I've just got error displaying right here, and right like that. Now, what I want to do is just use this function right here anytime I happen to hit an error. So that way, if I go to a route that doesn't exist, and I'm going to actually re remove this one because we're not going to have an about route, then it will display my error message instead of that ugly thing we got to start with. Now, there are a couple different ways to display these error messages, but what I'm going to do is actually have an error element that I say, hey, whenever there's an error, show this element instead. I do need a comma here once again, and I just want to pull in my error. And if I start to type, I should see it up top there. If I start to type, I should see it, but I'm not. So let me just go ahead and manually import it. So we'll just copy this down, change this out to error, and I don't need any of this. And in my pages, I should have an error element. Okay, so if I save it here, if I were to go to a route that doesn't exist now, like this, I should now just get error, which is my own custom message. Now, obviously, we're going to want to do more with that in the future, uh, so we'll get around to that in a later video, but just that's kind of the basics of how you display an error. Because this is on the root path, anything that I go to match that doesn't exist, this error element will be triggered and it will show instead. Now, I mentioned there's another way to do it, and that is you could come down here if you want, and you could say for my path, anything at the very end of my tree that doesn't exist, go ahead and show the element, uh, and the element I want you to show is error. And that should work the exact same way. Just make sure you put any actual routes that exist right here so that this is only triggered if nothing else matches it. Um, so in other words, if I were to come over here, let's delete this right here, and I just go to a different route like this, it should still show me my error element because it says, hey, I can't find anything that matches this right here, so I'll just show this final path because it says anything that exists that's not listed out, show this element. I just prefer to kind of keep it together with the routes and you can actually do some cool stuff when it comes to children where you can basically show an error message for any sub route in a section of your application. So we'll be doing that as we move throughout the application, but this is the bare bone basics. At the root directory, if you ever find any error, go ahead and just show this error element and that's where we're gonna start. So in this video, we learned the basics of creating routes, including passing in elements for different paths, actually loading data at each individual path, and using error elements. In the next video, we're going to talk about another superpower of this new React Router DOM, which is actions.